Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I'm here today with some really fun back to school projects. So I can't believe it's already time to start thinking about back to school. Of course, I have to say that summer goes by so fast every year for kids. I know how it is. Um, so I thought of some fun projects, and I think one of my favorite parts of this is well, the shoe is probably my favorite part, but a lot of you guys have been suggesting tissue box covers for like a standard size box of Kleenex brand tissues. I picked like the most popular brand so that it'd be easy for you to find the same exact box that I used, even though I'm sure a lot of the other brands are probably the same size. So this just fits right over the top and I decorated it with back to school papers and you know, the apple and everything. But obviously you could make it any theme or any color scheme that you wanted to. It could be for any holiday, any room, any kind of whatever. You could make it coordinate with like a kid's room for fun or um, you know, use like elegant papers for like a guest room or like a guest bathroom or whatever. You could really get creative, which I know is something that you like to do if you're watching this video. So back to the shoe, super cute and really just adorable. It's so fun to pick out all the colors and the laces. And if you look at shoes on the internet, they come in like every color under the sun. So you could really get creative, whatever you really feel like making your shoe to look like, it can really be fun. So something that I did um, where there are eyelets here, they're actually paper. This whole thing is just paper and ribbon. So you don't need to go out to the craft store and look for specific sized eyelets or anything like that. Your machine will actually cut these tiny little donut shaped hole or like, you know, circle with a hole in the middle that you can use as eyelets. So I just wanted that to be nice and easy so you don't have to get any extra supplies. So we also have our cute little backpack here, which was an awesome idea from Tinley on our design team. And it just opens up with a little snap closure here. Well, I don't want to mess with it too much, but as you can see, super cute and very quick and easy to put together. So if you want to make a quick little gift for someone who's going back to school or just someone who you feel like it's appropriate for, nice and quick and cute. So I also made this really fun little card here and it's kind of dimensional with these like little hearts that someone has cut out with these scissors here and I think it's nice and cute. So that would look really cute with any of these projects. And I also think that depending on the stamp that you use or however you make it look, it could be for a student or it could be for a teacher or you know someone who's involved with school, like your favorite bus driver or coach or whatever. So I also made this really simple little card that I thought would be nice to give as a gift to a teacher. So I made it nice and simple so that you could make a lot of them. I made 10 here and you could fit even more than 10. I'd say up to 20 probably, 20 cards in this little holder here, which holds a nice little standard size pen or pencil. You can decorate it more on the front if you want. You could even cut out the letters of the teacher's name, you know, like Mrs. So-and-so or whatever, to make it personalized. And it's gonna look really cute on their desk. And who doesn't love to get some cards that they can actually use when they want to send someone a note? So the paper that I used, as soon as I saw it come available on twopeasinabucket.com, I grabbed it because I knew I wanted to do a back to school thing ASAP and this is by Echo Park and it's called Paper and Glue and it's nice and it's cute it's colorful it's fun it's got some cute little like student elements to it I also got the small pad and that was fun to work with so but I also think whatever kind of school type of paper you have is going to look really awesome for these projects so I've got my pieces cut out to show you how these three-dimensional items go together so let's get started so first of all, let's take a look at our tissue box cover. And as you can see, it's just a really simple bottomless box with a nice opening in the top. So we've got two pieces that look like this, two that look like this, as well as the top and a liner piece that goes on at the, at the end on the inside to kind of strengthen it up and finish it off. So what I want to do is just grab any two, any I need the uh, one long and one short piece here. And I'm going to put glue on this side tab. And I'm going to glue one to the other. And I'm just doing my best to line it up as nicely as possible. And then I want to go ahead and 
glue the other side to this side. And obviously since it's in the shape of a rectangle, I want to alternate, you know, long, short, long, short. It's kind of hard to see my score lines with this crazy striped paper. So, okay. There we go. And now I can close it up here. And now I'm just finishing it up here by closing the loop. And I can actually lay it down flat and press down with my glue. I'm getting a little sloppy here with my glue, but that is okay. So next, we can either put the top on or we could flip these sides under. So what I wanna do is get a nice even layer of glue on this large flap here and fold it over. I wanna do the same thing on all four sides and glue, glue these down. And that's gonna strengthen the sides of the box. So let's pretend that I glued those down. That's what you wanna do. And then I've got my top and my liner. And as I can see, this one on the top here is a little bit smaller. So let's set that aside. That means that this is our top. And I just wanna put glue on all four of these tabs and then place my top in place and adjust it if I need to. Then I can go ahead and flip it over and I can glue this liner right onto the inside to finish it off and strengthen it up. Now all that's left to do is just put some more decorations on the front and on the top and whatever you wanna do. So now for our cards for teacher box, if I take these cards out, you can see that's what, what's left here is just a really simple box. And it's kinda like the one that I just made, except it's a little smaller. I've got two pieces like this, and then I've got the bottom and I've got the top. And then at the end, if you wanna put on your panel here, like this dark blue, you can. So I'm gonna start by putting glue on the side tab of either one of these long pieces. And then I'll just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So you just wanna do your best to line up your paper with your fold. And just glue that into place. And give it a second to dry here. And then I could either put the top or the bottom on. It doesn't matter which one, but I'm gonna start with the top because I think whichever one you start with is easier to get right. So since the top is more visible than the bottom, we just wanna go ahead and put, put glue on all four of these tabs going all the way out to the corners. A nice even layer. Maybe take your time a little bit more than I am right now. And just pop that into place on the top. Give it a moment to dry and then just do the same thing with the bottom, just put that right into place. So next for our backpack, I've got the front and the back here. I've got the two sides, which are identical, and I've got the bottom. And then I've got the two straps here with, I need um, four brads to put those on. So let's start with the body of the backpack. I just wanna glue the sides to the front and the back. Does not matter what order I go in. At this point, if you wanna go ahead and decorate the front of your backpack first, you can, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can always decorate it at the end, as well as the sides too. Whatever you feel works best for you is totally fine. So as you can see, I've got this long tab glued and this little short tab also glued. And then I want to go ahead and glue the back of my backpack here to this side. And like I said before, the two sides are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you grab. So I'm just gonna line this up as best I can here with this long tab. And I'm gonna flip it over so I can lay it on a flat surface and press down from the inside. 
and then get this little t baby tab into place here. So finally here I can just get this last side into place. And I think it's easier to start with the long tab as opposed to the short one. It just works a little, a little better. It gets a lot of surface area held together. And finally, I will just finish this up like this. So next, I'm going to put my straps on my backpack using my brads and then I will put the bottom on. It's going to be super easy. So in order to put the strap in place it's going to go like this. So what I want to do is put a brad through like this and open it up on the inside and then curve it around and open it up from the inside also. And if you want to take something like a pen or a pencil and kind of go like this to curve it out, I think that looks cute. So now all that's left to do is, you can see how the top goes together with those two little flaps. And then you just want to put glue on all four of these tabs here and put that bottom right into place. So next for our cute little shoe here, I've got the body of my shoe laid out, which is all cut out of one piece of 12 by 12 paper. And your machine will have cut a number on the bottom of most of these pieces. And I went ahead for the purposes of this video and I darkened them in with a pencil. You can do that if you want to, but it's not necessary as long as you can see the numbers. So you want to start by lining up your pieces sort of like this, either just like this or as long as you can see that they're going in order so it's easy for you to get what you need. So I've got one, two, three here, which are going to go side to side. And then these two unnumbered pieces form the tongue here, the tongue of the shoe. And then we've got five, six, seven, and then through 14. So while this number four piece is still flat on your table, <clears throat> you can go ahead and put your eyelets on your shoe. So I'm going to go ahead and start with number one. And all I want to do at this point is just put glue on these two side tabs and grab piece number two. And it's really important to just go one tab at a time. First, I'm concentrating on one tab giving it a second to dry, and then I'm moving on to the next tab. If I would try to do both of them at once, it wouldn't line up right and it would just not work properly. <clears throat> and it would probably get a little frustrating. So you definitely want to just do one at a time. And it's, it's so easy to just do one, and then it's super easy to do the other one. So when you add it all up, it's actually pretty easy. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got one, two, three together, and here's piece number four. So what I want to do <clears throat> is sort of get an idea for where these guys are going. And I'm going to start by putting glue on this piece, this tab on number four, and getting that in place. And I'm going to hold that as it's drying. And I'm going to get some glue on these other tabs here. Kind of glopping my glue on, not being as careful as I would like to be, but as long as you get the idea of what goes where, then that is all I'm interested in right now, as long as you can see how it works. So I can put glue on this last tab here, put that into place. And now since I'm working with this piece number four here, I might as well go ahead and put the tongue of my shoe together. 
So to do that, I want to put some glue on all three tabs on one side of the tongue of the shoe. And then I just want to go one tab at a time here. And put this into place. And if, if you want to take your time a little bit more, that's probably a good idea. I'm rushing a little bit because I don't want to take, take forever here. And you can pause, you can pause this at any time, obviously, and take your time with your project. So same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna put the other side of my tongue of my shoe in place. And as always, just one one tab at a time. Okay, so there's piece number four. And let's take piece number five here and glue that in place. And if you just hold up one piece to the other and think about it, you can see exactly where it should go. And you just want to do your best to line it up as perfectly as possible. So there's piece number five here. Now I can grab piece number six. And I can see that these two tabs need some glue here. And again, just one tab at a time. And doing my best to line it up really nicely. Although right now, <clears throat> like I said, I am rushing a little bit, so it's not really as aligned as I would like for it to be. So piece number seven here. It's ready to go into place. So now I've got piece number seven and piece number eight ready to go together here. So I will put some glue on these side tabs of piece number seven and put that into place. And again, just one, one at a time here. So then I can go ahead and grab number nine. And these, these next six pieces here are all very simple and very straightforward. So at this point, we can just go ahead and do the same thing with these nice, simple pieces to finish off the body of our shoe. So I've almost got my whole shoe body together here. So I just need to glue number 14 to the beginning, number one. So here is where I'm putting all my glue. And as always, just going one tab at a time here. And mine, you know, mine's not perfectly aligned, but you get the idea. So next, I'm going to take this long piece here, which is like a liner, and I want to glue this tab to this strip here to form a little like half circle type of shape. And then I want to go ahead and put glue on the entire outside of this piece on all of these panels here. And then I'm going to bend the tongue of my shoe out so it's out of my way. And then I want to put this inside without, without getting too much glue all over the place here. And that's going to go just under just under the top, and I want to get the center piece in place and then work my way out to the sides. That way there's no buckling or mis misglued areas. 
And there is our inside. So this, it finishes off the tabs that you would see, and it also helps hold up the tongue of the shoe inside. So at this point, we can go ahead and put our front of our shoe in place. So what I want to do is put glue just in the, in the center here. And I want to get that lined up real nice. This is kind of like the cornerstone of our white the rim of our sole here. And then all I want to do is give that a second to dry. And then let's take a look at our shoe panels. So now for each part of our shoe here, We've got a panel, which they're all different shapes, except these two here are clearly going to go on the tongue of the shoe. So we want to find these three pieces like this. And you can tell that these five pieces like this. And then the others are shorter and there's two that are kind of like shoe shaped. So we can set the shorter ones and the shoe shaped ones aside and let's go ahead and glue the tongue pieces, the tongue panels into place. So to do that I put glue on the whole entire piece and it's slightly smaller than the pieces that it's going on to. So there's going to be a border around it of solid color. So we've got the middle in place and let's put the side of the tongue in place. And I'm just, I'm centering it on the top and then I'm working my way down making sure that it's nice and centered all the way down. So I'll go ahead and finish off the tongue of my shoe here. And then we can go back to the white rim of the sole of our shoe. Okay, so there's our tongue. So now we can go ahead and put some glue on the center part of this piece here. And that's going to kind of hold the tongue of the shoe up a little bit. So it goes all the way up like this. And now however you want to do this, it really is fine. We just want to basically glue down each of these pieces onto our shoe so that they meet each other and so that they are glued down like so. So go ahead and start working on gluing down these panels. So to do that I'm going to start off with this long piece here. And as I'm, I'm going kind of panel by panel here and I'm making sure that it lines up with the bottom of my shoe. And just working my way all the way down to the end. And then I can put glue on this long piece. and put that into place. And again, I'm making sure that it meets up with itself here so that it's solid white. So next, before we finish gluing our white toe of our shoe into place, I want to glue this panel here with these holes in it. And you will have already had your eyelets in place either before you started making your shoe all together I guess if they're not in place, you can still add them if you want to. Or even without eyelets, it looks pretty cool, I think. So then we can go ahead and flip this part over, put some glue inside, make sure the tongue is inside the shoe, and then put that into place. So I'm going to hold this for a minute while it dries, and then I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the other side. So next, to put more of these panels in place, you can 
you can see where it goes if you hold it up even before you put glue on it if you just kind of hold it up and say okay yep that goes right there you can tell exactly which pieces go where and then you just want to glue them into place and do your best to center them on the pieces that they're going on and then we've got more panels that go all the way around and another shoe shaped one and this side is unfinished but you get the idea so if you want to emboss the front of yours like I did this is the diamonds embossing folder by Sizzix and that's this piece right here and that just goes right on the front but if you want to put a ribbon around your shoe like I've done here I used some really skinny double-sided tape on the back of this ribbon and I started the ribbon right about here in the middle of number five and I taped it all the way around on top of the white obviously and then I went all the way up here to the middle of number three and then I put my embossed piece on like this to cover up the ends of the ribbon like so so as you can see that's how it looks so next if you've got all your panels on and all your white pieces on this final white piece here goes on like this and depending on it should fit perfectly but since we have 14 pieces glued together there could be a little bit of variation in yours so if you get to this other side here and you've got a tiny bit extra you can just take your scissors and just trim off like a hair like the size of a hair off the end of it until you've got just the right size so finally once all that is done you can just flip your shoe over and basically we're just going to glue this bottom piece right into place so the way that I like to do that is to put glue on maybe one two three of like the toe pieces here to kind of get it in place then I just gently lift it off and I put glue pretty much on the whole entire rest of it and then I just go one tab at a time very carefully making sure that it's lined up until I've got the whole bottom in place and if you feel like yours is not lined up as perfectly as you'd like it mine actually worked out perfectly but if you want to you could always take a little sandpaper or trim something if it's sticking off a little bit then finally the only thing left to do is put your little shoe liner in place and since you can't see the inside of the toe it's not a full full size but you just put glue on the back and slide it in to finish it off and you've got your cute shoe once you put your fun little laces on and one more note I just took some some washi tape and I rolled it around the ends of the ribbon to kind of look like the ends of shoelaces so there you have it super fun projects for back to school I hope you have fun making them and if you do we would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog or Pinterest or Instagram or really anywhere you want to share them it's fun to see so thanks for watching I'll catch you next time and happy crafting Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. svgcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.